Hey guys, so what the fuck is going on with web development these days? Um, I am completely unmotivated to mess with anything uh, JavaScript related right now. I don't know that I've ever felt this way. So in seven years of development, I would say that the actual ecosystem of the JavaScript community is fucked so bad that I no longer want to come home and actually work on the latest JavaScript bullshit, really. Um, so it's not like entirely bad and I think some of it has to do with being uh, busier a little bit more stressed out uh, just dealing with you know day-to-day -day responsibilities not just at work but also at home and and also dealing with technology that just isn't very good um, so when I look at uh, the current state of uh, ES6 and uh, React and, and JavaScript and uh, and I'm looking at all the tools like Babel and Webpack and all the different versions that, that we have of, of those flavors and NPM and the node modules and all this other bullshit that we deal with. Um, it, it's just not fun anymore. Not like it used to be with programming in Django. Um, some of you guys have actually shared an article, which I also saw in Hacker News, and I really think it was a, a great article. And I understand the guy was trying to be um, somewhat humorous. Um, but the bottom line is that it, it is partly supposed to be humorous. Um, it's it's definitely stretching the truth in at, you know in certain areas or really just kind of exaggerating certain areas, um, but then there's a lot of truth to it and I think the truth is what hurts. So the article was written on Hacker Noon by Jose Aguinaga. Sorry if I'm not saying that right, but um, the dude I mean just a, a genius article I think here and it, it was also listed on Hacker News and had a really a highly upvoted answer and. Um, I've shared this with a few of my uh, coworkers, people I've talked to in the development community. I know that you guys have also shared this with me and I appreciate it. This article is just absolutely hilarious when it comes to, hey, I just want to go ahead and uh, make an Ajax call, bind some data and maybe put it in like a table. And all of a sudden now with the modern state of uh, web development, we have all these different tools and things like that. And I understand what a lot of you guys that love JavaScript and you, what you're going to say is, uh, you know, this is all overblown, it's overhyped. Uh, but I, I don't really know that it is because honestly, my latest setup is is using um, you know, Redux and uh, I'm using ES uh, 2016 um, or ES 2015. So really, I have to then use uh, Babel, and I'm also having to use Babel Polyfill. And if you npm install Babel, I think uh, somebody mentioned in here it's got 40,000 files just in Babel, which is actually transpiling your modern day C uh, or modern day JavaScript that doesn't even run into the browser into a um, into a form that actually works, but then you have to use like a module bundler like Webpack. And then now Webpack, um, you know, the, the fact that it bundles everything into one humongous file is not good enough. So now we need to have uh, multiple dependency bundles and things like that. So that's going to be like the new flavor. Um, even beyond that, like, um, you know, if you have uh, an NPM, you run an NPM update and you have all these different dependencies and it goes through and starts updating your stuff. Next thing you know, due to uh, the you know, MP, the nature of NPM as a package manager uh, library is just an absolute mess. So um, how often do you M NPM install something and, and you don't have the right version? So you're looking on GitHub trying to figure out, you know, why somebody's weekend project is clashing with, you know, 14 other dependencies that you have um, that you didn't even know that you were installing. You just have an NPM install uh, option A. And then next thing you know, you got the entire alphabet uh, downloaded. So it's just, like I said, it's just not very, very pleasing. Um, and another thing, too, is I see people using some of these tools for the wrong reasons. Like, people are using and finding reasons to use Redux when you don't fucking need it. So why are you using it? You're just creating more of a hassle for yourself and anybody who has to clean up your shit down the road. So, um, you know, it, it's just like, it, it, and the number one rule with something like Redux, if you don't know if you need it, don't, don't fucking use it. That should be like, that should be the number one rule and they should phrase it that way. But they say, if you don't know that you need Redux, then don't use it or that you probably don't. But I like the way I say it better because uh, I think it, it rings, it rings true and hopefully we'll get people's attention. So the other day I was talking about, you know, what, what am I going to be working on? Well, really, I haven't worked on anything in probably four or five months because I just haven't had the motivation beyond, you know, coming home and doing this channel uh, and then just, you know, dealing with the current, like, like I am literally on the bleeding edge of, uh, of JavaScript and it, it sucks. And, uh, and I just don't want to come home and, and do more of that. And I think that that, uh, in a way, it's a little bit concerning because I don't think I'm burning out or anything like that. I just simply think that I've seen where we were seven years ago. I've seen where we were three years ago and then, you know, and, and now, you know, two years ago and then one year ago and even one year ago, it feels like it was so much different than it is now. 
Um, and I can certainly speak to that with React in 2014 compared to writing React now if you're trying to uh, you know, uh, uh, cater towards the yeah, ES 2015. Those days before Babel and all this other bullshit, I think was just a lot more, it was a lot simpler. Um, and I guess I just, I somewhat miss it. And even though I knew a lot less about web development back then, it was still a lot more exciting. So that brings up the, the issue and the point that I thought about where maybe it's just that I've seen where we've come from and I've seen, you know, where we are now. And I think that it's bullshit and maybe I'm just an old crotchety person or something like that. So there is that possibility. Um, and I don't necessarily hate all of these tools, but I just, I guess I hate, you know, the, the, the amount of amount of work and requirements and everything in order to just get shit working, just basic, simple implementation set up. And, um, and maybe it's just, maybe it's just older developers, like I said, because I know that some of the newer people, some of the people in JavaScript feel that the community is absolutely fine. Um, but I like the Python community much better than I like, uh, like, like JavaScript's community. I definitely like C Sharp's community better because C Sharp at least is a lot of older engineers Many of them are like not trying to be bleeding edge. They literally just want to get the job done, find a tool that can get the job done and go home, spend time with their families, with their boats, with their dogs and things like that. Because isn't that what you know, life is about ultimately? It's cool to tinker with new toys, but when we're creating so much extra work to have an inferior product, it just doesn't make any sense. And what do I mean by that? Okay, let's look at Node.js. Node.js I like Node.js for simple websites, definitely for you know, chat-based, asynchronous, you know, uh, uh, you know, readable, you know, writable APIs, and I think Node.js is a, is a great tool. When it came to actually having to deal with authentication and needing a full stack framework, I chose Django because it's much cheaper than ASP.NET, and also the fact that it's just much more robust and it's been around the block, and it's not trying to be this bleeding edge bullshit. Now, Node is not necessarily a framework, right? So you just get the bare bones implementation, but if you use something like Express or Meteor, you're jumping through more hoops than what I have to jump through with just getting a Django project up to date. So, so case in point of a shitty website that I think um, that the company really spent you know, a ton of money trying to pr produce a cutting edge, bleeding edge website, and it's literally inferior to almost all the other ones that I've seen, and that is walmart.com. Walmart.com was being praised as like a Node.js website. They use Node and they use all this JavaScript and everything, and, and they're using the latest JavaScript. That motherfucking site doesn't work. I mean, just yesterday they lost the TV sale because it, the website didn't work. I ended up going to Best Buy. I was also shopping on Target. Both of their websites are much, much more usable than, uh, than Walmart.com. And, and another thing, okay, well, maybe it's just Walmart.com, right? Well, I can tell you LinkedIn sucks ass too. I mean, that for, if you compare that to something like a Google website, like a YouTube, or even, uh, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, but I would even say that Facebook with PHP and everything is better experience than something like LinkedIn. Um, now with um, with Walmart.com, it was just an exceptionally piece of crap. You know, it was, uh, and the reason why I mentioned that actually is because not only did they lose a TV sale for me, they also uh, I had visited it multiple times because I was literally trying to save some money. And I hate Walmart. I hate shopping there, but I, I do shop there. You know what I mean? There, it's the convenience. It's open 24 hours. Like you can get electronics in the middle of the night. Um, so I don't want to bash Walmart or anything like that. But I went to the website on my phone. And I go to look at TVs and literally nothing was pulling up. So I'm like, oh, maybe the site's down. That happens all the time. So then I go in and a couple hours later, I log in from my computer. And as I start like getting into and I start browsing the site quite a bit using the latest version of Chrome on a Windows 10 machine, the site literally starts, it, 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 it really start, it starts going to a crawl. And it wasn't my internet. I have Fios internet. It's fast. And I was checking other sites as well. Um, but then it started doing weird things like I'd click a box and nothing would happen click a box like twice and then I refresh then the box checked when I refresh so it's like there was just you could tell it was all kinds of JavaScript on top of JavaScript and it was hacks on top of hacks and and granted the developers at Walmart are probably very very good and they probably get paid hundred and forty thousand dollars a year we've created these hurdles that we now have to jump through where when businesses just want to sell products make money and profit and instead hipster trendy JavaScript developers have created all these tools and shit that we now have to jump through in order to have a worse experience in my opinion than what we had five years ago. And, uh, and this, is a, this is a total rant video actually I didn't even think it was going to turn into a complete rant but um, I like getting this off my chest. I mean uh, I'll be honest like I've seen Redux be used in implementations that React was capable of doing a year and a half ago. 
Redux is supposed to be able to, to synchronize your state into like a global state. So if you have multiple components, especially multiple components that might be uh, interacting with APIs and things like that, you're supposed to use this immutable state because it's cool to be a mutable and functional program where everything should be immutable. Um, and that's bullshit too. Uh, but this this whole immutable state between you know Redux, so all these components can share their state and everything like that. I've seen people have individual Redux states for each individual component that they're creating. And nobody t takes a moment and says, hey, what, what are we doing here? You don't need a, a state manager for individual components when React had that capability out of the box. Like, what, what are we doing? If you have to have a very, very complex UI, like I said, where you have multiple components that might be interfacing to multiple different APIs and things like that, then yes, they maybe you should have a global, a global state. And and the mutable global state's probably good. There's benefits there, but even you know the the Redux tools and the hot reloading and all that. I'm so sick of hearing about that shit. Um, it doesn't work um, half the time, and it, it's just so unnecessary. But now that I have that off my, my chest, I, I know that these developers are good. A lot of these guys are developing these libraries. They're, they're better than I am, and I'm perfectly fine with with saying that. Uh, but I guess where I'm bitter a little bit is just simply based on the fact that I come home and I don't want to do any any website development. It's just it's not fun. It's not cool. I have all these different ideas, and I almost feel like it's a requirement that I start dealing and tinkering with all these newer toys in order to stay relevant. And uh, and I think in the back of my mind, I know that that's what I'm going to end up doing once I get my motivation back. I'll continue to start tinkering with some of the latest tools. And I'll probably continue to scratch the surface with this thing and that thing and not really get anywhere. Um, but I do that in order to, you know, main, make sure I'm staying up to date and I stay employable and all this stuff. And um, But maybe I'll choose not to do that. So maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll do that. I guess I haven't really thought about it too much because I'm not sure that you get anywhere. And I've said before, you jump around from one thing to the next, you're not going to get any better as a developer. You're going to have all kinds of scratch the surface, you know, really superficial knowledge of this and that. And you might be able to have a decent conversation with over a few beers with a couple of other coders or something like that. But as soon as you start getting into like the real implementation details, um, then I think that's where you're going to end up falling short if you're jumping from one thing to the next. So I personally feel like at the moment, number one, I don't feel like doing any website development, but if I did, I would probably stick with jQuery um, and I would probably use maybe Vue.js, maybe. I don't even know if I would use that. Basically, whatever I use, it might even be Knockout. I don't give a shit what it is, but um, it, it needs to provide benefit and it needs to provide noticeable benefit right away. And and I may not, you know what, I may not even use anything that requires that I have a bunch of config files and shit like that in order for it to work or that I have to transpile it in order to be able to step through it in my browser. I'm sick of all that. I, and I, I think that direction needs to change. In fact, now even more, I've thought about, you know, whether or not Babel or TypeScript is the answer, but I actually might welcome the fact that Microsoft is running TypeScript because I feel like JavaScript is the inmates running the asylum. And at least with something like TypeScript, you're going to have some you know, some casual direction. And yeah, it may not be you know using the latest evergreen browser standards for ES 2016 plus or something like that. But I can live with a little bit more boringness in my life. I know that. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening to this rant. Please subscribe and thank you for your support. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.